good morning everyone my name is lakshmi so today we are going to teach about heat okay so generally in our day to day life we are dealing with heat and temperature also so but there is a difference between heat and temperature so if you take heat heat is a flow of energy that means it is a form of energy which is flowing from hot body to cold body so if you take heat it is flowing from hot body to cold body so whereas if you take temperature it is the degree of hotness or coldness in other terms it can also be tell it is a measure of thermal equilibrium okay so now we are having the terms heat temperature and thermal equilibrium so what do you mean by thermal equilibrium so if you take a thermal equilibrium you have to take two bodies so that should have different temperatures so if they are having different temperatures and they are in coming contact with each other then they will transfer energy so if both are having different temperatures means one is having high temperature one is having low temperature that means energy will be flowing from higher body to colder body so this transfer of energy will be continued till both the bodies will get the same temperature that means both the bodies should contain same degree of hotness or same degree of coldness so all these three terms can be explained by taking one example so just like a one activity we have to take two beakers in one beaker we have to fill hot water in another beaker we have to fill cold water now take one thermometer and put it in hot water so then you will observe the change in mercury level so that means mercury level will be rising so why because here mercury level is rising so here if you take water so that water is having high temperature whereas thermometer is having low temperature according to heat that energy is flowing from hot body to cold body if you take this experiment so water is is having highest temperature and thermometer is having lowest temperature obviously the heat will be flowing from hot water to the thermometer that means hot water is losing energy and thermometer is gaining energy that gained in energy is represented in terms of mercury level rise in the similar manner if you take a cold water so in cold water also we have to dip the thermometer again if you dip the thermometer in cold water then we observe this cold this mercury level is decreasing when compared to this hot water experiment so this means here cold water is having less temperature whereas thermometer is having high temperature so that means heat energy is transferring from thermometer to the cold water so that means heat energy is losing by the thermometer thereby mercury level is decreasing here so here the energy transfer will be continuing still the both the thermometer and the hot water are getting the same temperature so that means if the mercury level is rising at that time both are getting into equilibrium with each other here also so thermometer level is decreasing that means both are getting into equal temperature so that is only thermal equilibrium so next one is units of heat and units of the units of heat and units of temperature so units of heat so heat can be measured so first anything can be measured in units if you take water so water will be measured in liters ml etc so like that heat can also be measured temperature can also be measured 
so in terms of measuring so we we use units here so units of heat so to to in two ways we can give units si units and cgs units if it is si unit joules is a unit for heat whereas cgs unit it is a calories okay so in the same way units of temperature is also having si units and cgs units si units of temperature is kelvin cgs units of okay, temperature is degree celsius degree celsius generally we you observe in thermometers okay so next calories so if you take calories one calorie is equal to 4.186 joules that is a conversion of calories into joules in the similar way kelvins can be converted into degree celsius degree celsius can be converted into kelvins so that is that relation is 0 degree centigrade is equal to 273 kelvins so this kelvins if the temperature scale is measured in terms of kelvin so then that temperature is known as absolute temperature so that means temperature of kelvin can be converted into temperature of degree celsius further we have to take 273 plus temperature of degree celsius so then degree celsius can be converted into kelvins okay so next another terminology i am using so that means kinetic energy so we all know kinetic energy what is kinetic energy so that is uh, if any body which is in motion will show the kinetic energy that means moment of body okay so now kinetic energy we are taking here so there is a relationship between kinetic energy and temperature t kinetic energy and temperature t or having the relationship between each other so what is that relationship i am giving the statement kinetic energy is directly proportional to t so you all know what is directly proportional to that means if kinetic energy is increasing temperature will also increases so that is the relationship between kinetic energy and t so this can also be proved by taking one small experiment so now in order to prove this we have to take two vessels fill it with again hot water cold water now sprinkle the water sprinkle the food color we all know food color what is generally in our kitchen we use food color okay so just sprinkle small amount of food color in hot water small amount of food color in cold water so then what happens so this will be form a food grains so food grains means small small balls like so that will be floating on the hot water and that that also floating on the cold water so that food grains movement we have to observe so in hot water so the food grain movement is more in cold water the food grain movement is less compared with the hot water so that indicates that here in hot water temperature is high here in cold water temperature is less so here movement is high here movement is less so that means kinetic movement is high in hot water kinetic movement is less in cold water so that means kinetic energy is directly proportional to the temperature no the heat temperature and thermal equilibrium and their units all these things can be proved by taking one small experiment so that is in beaker we have to take hot water half of the hot water only we have to take so that means it will coming up to this level hot water so above that hot water we have to pour coconut oil okay so we are pouring coconut oil and then this is closed with a cap and it will be having only two openings through one opening we will put one thermometer in a coconut oil through another one we will put a another thermometer into a hot water so now 
if you observe the temperatures of this one coconut oil and the hot water so where here so coconut oil is getting continuously increased that means the reading of thermometer is continuously increasing here and the reading of hot water thermometer is continuously decreasing so why because this change here temperature is increasing here temperature is decreasing again the concept comes heat so heat is transferring from hot body to cold body hot body here is hot water coconut is normal water coconut is normal oil so now from hot body to cold body so it is flowing so temperature is increasing in coconut oil temperature is decreasing in hot water so that means here the kinetic energy increases in coconut oil kinetic energy decreases in coconut oil so there will be another small experiment so that will gives the nature of the absorption of the temperature so that means the rate of the rise of temperature will be depending on the nature of the substance what we are taking here coconut oil is there what hot water is there both are having different natures so depending upon the natures what is absorbing more so coconut is oil is absorbing more heat or this water is absorbing more heat so that will be taken by one small experiment only so again we have to take one big beaker so in that we have to fill water so then put two test tubes you all know what is test tube so in the test tubes in one test tube we have to fill coconut oil in another test tube we have to fill water here coconut oil here water so by using rubber cups thermometer will be put it into this coconut oil and hot water and water so now what we have to do so this beaker should be heated so this indicating heating so if it is in heated so then first the water which is present in the vessel will get heated and then through that it will be heated coconut oil will be heated and then water will be heated simultaneously so that means for some particular time we have to heat both this coconut oil uh, coconut water uh, oil and this water so first example 10 minutes i am heating after 10 minutes we have to check the readings of thermometers so in coconut oil the temperature is high so whereas in water the temperature is less so why because means the rate of increase of temperature depends on the nature of the substance we are using two different different substances here so nature depending upon their nature only they are observing the heat so that that is that will be proved by this experiment so next one is specific heat we know about heat so what is specific heat so this will be proved by again we have to take small experiment only so for that one again we have to take two beakers so in one beaker we have to fill 250 ml of water another beaker 1 liter of water now both should be heated heating should be done so for 10 minutes i am taking so for your understanding only i am telling 10 minutes otherwise it will be for some time they will say so for 10 minutes we are heating the both the waters so then after 10 minutes if you observe the temperature of these two 250 ml water is heated to is showing the temperature of per suppose 20 degree centigrade so then 1 liter water will show only 10 degree centigrade so why because this temperature difference here are taking we are both the or waters only okay so in the previous case we are taken coconut oil so because of that reason they are showing different temperatures but here in this case we are taking both or water only so but we are observing the temperature change so why because this temperature change here the only change is mass of the solutions is different here 250 ml we are taking here 1 liter we are taking so because of that change we are getting the temperature change also so that means 250 ml water is 
is getting heated fast than that of the 1 liter water. So that means, so amount of heat of absorption is higher for high mass of the substances. So that can be indicated by Q is directly proportional to T. So Q is heat of absorption and T is a temperature. So again another statement is also there. Q is directly proportional to delta T. So Q is directly proportional to delta T means. So Q is directly proportional to delta T. Delta T is a change in temperature. Okay. So change in temperature means if again if you are heating again 10 more minutes. That means altogether 20 minutes. So it is T1, it is T2. Change in temperature means T2 minus T1. So delta T is equal to T2 minus T1. So that is a delta change. Sorry. So th that is a change in temperature. If change in temperature is also increasing, so then heat of absorption will also increasing. Okay. So sorry here I have written T. So that is M. So that means Q is directly proportional to mass of the body. So from these two statements you can write Q is directly proportional to M into delta T. So not we are writing this is considered ex, uh, equation 1, this is equation 2. So then from the equation 1 and 2 we can write Q is directly proportional to M and delta T. So that is nothing but if the mass of the solution increases then heat of absorption also increases. So change in temperature increases, heat of absorption will also increases. Okay. So next from this. So Q is equal to, if you have to write in equation form, so that should be equal to some constant. So M into S delta T. So here S is a constant we are using here. So S is a specific heat only. Specific heat. So from that equation we can write S is equal to, from this equation only, S is equal to Q by M into delta T. So Q by M into delta T. So that is the specific heat for the solution. So that means the definition for the specific heat is the amount of heat, amount of heat required for the rise of temperature of 1 gram of the solution by 1 unit. 1 gram of the solution by 1 unit, how much amount of heat is required? So that is known as specific heat heat. So from this specific heat, if you observe the equation of specific heat, S is equal to Q by M into delta T. Yeah, S is directly proportional to Q and S is directly proportional to delta T. So that indicates that if the heat of absorption increases, then specific heat he will also increases. So change in temperature increases, then specific heat will also increases. Okay. So next one, units of this specific heat. So what are the units for specific heat? Again units. Units means you all know. So that is a measuring ones. Okay. So there are two units are there. SI units and CGS units. SI unit for specific heat is that is equal to joules. So per kg Kelvin. K means Kelvin. Joules per kg Kelvin. So and CGS units is equal to calories per gram degree Celsius. Degree Celsius. So this is the units for SA and CGS units for specific heat. Now we have given the definition for specific heat. So that 